Good morning and welcome to the OTB channel. I said I would try and produce another video this weekend and I was originally going to do something on uh, the sort of commands that you can use for hardware troubleshooting. I'm still thinking about how that's going to look however so that will probably be a few days or perhaps even a week. One of my sus subscribers has also asked if I can do something on Mate and why I, I choose it as my default desktop. So I'm giving that some thought as well. But today, something a little di bit different. I, I got up this morning and I was watching Biddle and I heard the term Olive Video Editor mentioned. And I also saw a couple of videos uh, on running the Olive Video Editor in Windows. Well, I did a little bit of research and it seems that this is an open source editor that is in development. It's very much at the alpha stage, so it hasn't got all of the features that it will eventually end up with, uh, but it is sort of usable. So I thought I'd give it a spin this morning. I'm in the process of trying to design a new end screen. I haven't got that far. But I have done a little bit of work in OpenShot, which I seem to default to these days. And I thought I'd try and replicate it in uh, the Olive video editor. So here we go. So as a little bit of a test, um, I've set up uh, a very, very basic animation. I've been playing around with a new ending screen for, uh, for my channel. And uh, I put something together um, earlier on this morning in OpenShot. And let me just play it to you so you can see what I'm looking at. It's got a like and subscribe button. has a bit of an overlay on top of a, a PNG image. And then an animated scene comes in just to finish everything off. So you should see in front of you the Olive page. Uh, there's not a lot on it at the moment. Home, downloads, uh, a link to donate to Patreon, Twitter, Reddit, GitHub, etc, etc. And a link to download. What is it? Well, it's an open source, non-linear video editor, uh, which is aiming to provide a fully featured alternative to high-end professional video editing software, so it's got to be worth a view. How good is it? Well, it's making progress, but the developers say, say it's still very much in alpha, so we can't expect perfection as yet, but let's see what it can do. I went to the downloads page and I clicked on Linux, as it seems to be cross-platform, and if you're running uh, Ubuntu or Linux Mint, there's a PPA that you can get it from. It's available as a snap and it's available as an app image. There's also uh, an AUR package, a flat pack, and uh, apparently a Debian version is available through the Debian packages site. And there's a separate one for Void Linux. So they really have tried to provide as many formats as possible. For the sake of just doing a very quick install, I downloaded the Snap. I've installed it. Let's see if it's capable of producing a very, very simple intro and <laughs> whether or not I'm capable of working my way around it because I don't on here see any instructions or help pages? What about GitHub? Okay, we have an image. But nothing at the moment that looks like a wiki. So it may well be a case of finding my way round. Hold on. Overview guide. Okay, I'm going to have a quick look at this and then we'll come back to Olive and see what I can do. It looks like there is some instructions on GitHub and I'll see how much that helps me. So I've installed a snap uh, and uh, I've just opened it up. 
and this is what we get on the welcome screen. So Olive's a free open source video editor released under the GNU GPL. If you paid for this software, you've been scammed. It's currently in alpha, which means it's unstable and very likely to crash, have bugs and perhaps have missing features. That's fair enough. Let me click OK on that. Right, so looking at this initially, it has the same sort of look and feel about it that's perhaps similar to Shotcut, but with a few differences. I'm going to be playing this by ear and just trying to figure out how to do various things. I'm going to bring in a few files. Three, in fact, I'm going to bring in an image. I'm going to bring in an animated file, an MP4, and I'm going to bring in also uh, my little subscribe and like uh, animation and see if we can put it together and see if we can um, render it. So I'm assuming that the best way to do this is to simply pull down the image. Okay, so that seems to work relatively well. So it's just an image. It's not animated at all. It's just some uh, simple PNG. I wonder if we can move this up. Right, there doesn't seem to be layers here uh, where one's an audio track, one's a video track. It's just very, very straightforward. Right, let's bring in from here my little like and subscribe and click on play. So you can see right from the word go that uh, if I'm going to overlay that on top of the PNG image, I need to change it quite significantly. So let me bring the video head all the way back and click on that. And I see up here in the middle, I have an effects button. Um, not quite sure how to work my way around this, but okay. Let's click that. Oh, it's got a chroma key, I see, which could be quite useful for some people. But I'm not immediately seeing anything that's going to uh, reduce the image size and change its position. What about that? Let me bring the video head halfway over. Let me see if I can change its position. Let me go down. I think that might be, ah, no, that takes it to the left. Okay. What about the anchor point? Right, okay. What does that do? It doesn't scale it in any way, but there is a scale option here. Let's go down to, I don't know, 40%. Ah, right, okay. Wonder if I can just... All right, so it's as simple as that. So hopefully that's applied to the whole thing. Okay, that looks good. The trouble is, at the moment, I only have this straightforward PNG image, which I'm obviously going to have to stretch. So if I 
come down here to the timeline and stretch that. Does this look any better? Okay. Well, next, let's uh, bring in the, uh, the next bit, which uh, is the animated part of this and just put it up to that and see how this looks. Okay, uh, so that's around, um, well, 12.2 sec 12 seconds. That's probably enough. Let's see if we can render this. And I have absolutely no idea how we would end render this at the moment. So, export. Right, so export in format MP4, the range, the entire sequence, the codec. Okay, it's... Uh, H264, which looks right to me. 1920 by 1080, frame rate 29.97. Compression, okay, that seems to be pretty much fixed, but 36, that's fine. Sampling rate, 48,000. Okay, let's see how it does. I'm not even sure where it's going to save it at the moment. Aha! Right, well, let's go to my computer and onto desktop. And I'll put it in the olive folder and we'll call it olive. Save. Okay, really quick. I'm not sure at the moment if this uses hardware uh, encoding or whether it's just using software. Nevertheless, we'll have a look at the video, see what we think. We now have uh, the video here, Olive MP4, which has been saved. Let's have a look at how big that is. <laughs> not very big is the answer. 404, 405 kilobytes. Earlier on, and that's a 13 second clip by the way, earlier on I did it in open shot and there's quite a significant difference. This is three and a half megabytes. Now, this is probably due to the fact that um, the way to choose quality on open shot and olive is not the same. With OpenShot, I just automatically chose the high quality option. Uh, with Olive, I wasn't sure, to be honest, uh, which option to change. But let's play them both and see what happens. So here's the Olive MP4 in VLC player. Uh, you can see that's actually 12 seconds. Fine, the overlay seems to have worked. The animation has worked. Okay, well, so far so good. Let's compare that to the one I created earlier with OpenShot. This is actually a second longer. But essentially the same thing. Perhaps slightly better quality, so I just need to find out how to tweak Olive to put out... Um, a higher quality image but on the face of it it does the job and that's the olive video editor it shows promise i think um it did crash on me once but that's to be expected it's an alpha product but it's free and open source and it looks like it's only going to get stronger as i said i've tended to default to open shot i do like shotcut as well I don't know what it is about the interface. I just find OpenShot easier at the moment. 
and perhaps because I've used it the most, I, I, I've got used to it and I know how to do more things with it. But I'm always open to looking at new software and uh, I'll monitor the progress of this one. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please like and subscribe. It really helps. And stay well until next time. Thank <laughs> you.